a big uh, number of big uh, asset managers have been getting into and expanding in private markets. What's JP Morgan Asset Management doing? So the firm is definitely growing its footprint into private credit. They're doing this a couple ways. Uh, for one, they just appointed their CFO, Meg McClellan, into a newly uh, formed role of head of private debt. They're also doing some hiring and potentially some more acquisitions to grow their assets. What's the goal here? Why is this happening now? So it's part of a push from investors. Investors really want someone that's specialized in these kind of unique asset classes, um, and especially when you're talking about alternatives, and there are some you know, intricacies along Although, the way. Although, okay, how much is this coming from investor demand? How much is this coming from the fact that fees are higher in the alternative space? I mean, that is definitely a driver as well, as fees have kind of compressed along the board. Uh, you know, banks are making the smart decisions and boosting uh, fees where they they think they'll come. <laughs> is it largely in private debt or is it also private equity? Is it also uh, in perhaps beaten up existing public debt? I mean, where, where is the focus here? So the focus, especially for uh, JP Morgan, is going to be in um, credit that has uh, collateral backing it. So they really see a lot of opportunity in that. So when there is a downturn, they can go in and seize the assets if need be. They're also seeing opportunity in special situations and distress. Collateral backing it, which brings <laughs> us perfectly to Adam Temkin and the underlying supply and demand fundamentals when it comes to commercial mortgage-backed debt in particular. You recently wrote a piece talking about the year ahead. What are bankers expecting in terms of supply? CMBS was up 20% this year, may go up another 20%. In terms of issuance? In terms of issuance. Uh, could be close to $140 billion next year. Low rates, borrowers are locking in those fixed rates, search for yield, and a mini maturity wave where borrowers may refinance next year uh, because of the low rates. So it's not necessarily a lot of net new supply as much as just sort of recycling existing uh, securities? Is that That's the idea? That's right. It's a lot of refinancings. And not only that, but also a search for yield, great relative value there. There is a concern that people have with the commercial mortgage debt market recently, or commercial mortgage market just broadly, because there's been a weakening in the underlying market. What are you hearing uh, from bankers and investors on their concerns about that? Retail is just a small portion. It's actually lower leverage in the post-crisis CMBS and great relative value. Uh, CMBS, like a lot of structured markets, did not tighten in. The spreads did not tighten in as much as, let's say, investment-grade corporate bonds. So it's great relative value. All the banks are saying get in it now before there's a rally in CMBS next and, year. And when you say retail, it's because there has been a whole world of pain in the mall space and the retail focus space, but not so much elsewhere. Is that Correct. the idea? Correct. Delinquencies in some CMBS that have malls in them. Okay. But uh, the collateral is getting a lot cleaner now. Yeah, well, it's been washed out, which brings us uh, to Shanali. And when it comes to demand for some of the assets, it brings us to the fact that more public companies are trying to go private for a variety of reasons, in no small part because of the money flooding into this area. And Hudson's Bay, we know, uh, for example, one shopping-based company, uh, Shanali, has been trying to go private. What are we seeing with that in particular? With Hudson Bay in particular, there's a little bit of an issue here because there's an investor that really wants a higher valuation here in terms of this take private deal. But like you say, they're not only companies that are looking to go private that are already in public markets that don't really like this pressure from shareholders that are not that patient in terms of a turnaround plan. And at the same time, you have more companies that might be looking for a different strategic exit while they're entering public markets as to not face that investor pressure in the first place. Well, and that's something that we just saw uh, in the energy space with a takeover that was done, I believe, by Blackstone, but it was done at a pretty high valuation, right? It was. It was 15% higher and this is Blackstone infrastructure for tall grass energy it was done 15 percent higher than their initial offer was it's really interesting to see these public shareholders push back at these uh, big private equity firms and say listen you need to pay up a little more to make this worth our time to take this out of the public market and just uh, more broadly Shanali can you give us a sense of what the advantage is for companies to be private over public at this point Listen, Lisa, a lot of people are having a lot of issues with corporate governance. A lot of the things that flew in the past, dual class structures and whatnot that allowed management teams to do whatever they wanted to do, are not flying with the investors anymore that want more control, especially these big index funds. They've taken a more active role in the market. Meanwhile, you have private equity that's willing to say, OK, let's be more patient, while we also have co-investors, big family offices, pension funds that are willing to put more towards our deals. With that said, valuations, according to Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, are as high on average for LBOs as they've been since 2000. So earning a 
return on these assets are going to be a more difficult thing moving forward.